Good morning. You guys have started it out so well already by honoring our pastor, and that's what this day is about. Pastor Doug, we're celebrating 40 years of ministry, 37 years of ministry right here at Rose Heights, and today is all about you and what God has done through you. And so today we are celebrating in every possible way a, such a wonderful man who has been so faithful to lead us as a congregation. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm going to open this with prayer. Our program is going to move relatively quickly. There's a lot of moving pieces. It's very difficult to cram 40 years into a short period. And so we're going to give this as much time as it needs because he's certainly worthy to be celebrated. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, we thank you for this couple who have been so faithful to follow you in all the ways that you have set before them. Each of the opportunities and the obstacles and the moments of great challenge and of great triumph, they have been faithful to you and they have been faithful to lead us. Today we honor them. Today we celebrate them. And so Lord, may this day uh, somehow in some way speak to their hearts the level of gratitude and thanksgiving we have for them. Lord, may you take our words which seem to fall so short of truly how we feel for them, but Lord, would you take them and place them in just the right way to warm their hearts and let them know how much we love and appreciate them today. So Lord, we give you thanks for this moment. We ask God that you would be with this program from beginning to end, be with both campuses, all of our overflow. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In just a moment, our mayor, Mayor Don Warren, will be coming and making a, a proclamation. Following him will be Tom Morgan making a presentation on behalf of Senator Brian Hughes. And following him will be Congressman Nathaniel Moran. Would you give them a hand? Good morning. It, it's an honor and a privilege to be here uh, this morning. Although this is not my home church, I can't tell you how proud I am of Doug and Gina and, and the impact not only that they've made on Rose Heights, but on the community as a whole. So thank you both. And now for the proclamation, Doug and Gina Anderson Day, January 22nd, 2023. Whereas Doug and Gina have faithfully served the congregation of Rose Heights Church of God for 37 years, accepting his first position at the church in 1983, and has served as lead pastor for the past 20 years. And whereas during his years as children's pastor, Pastor Doug was influential in the growth of Rose Heights and its relocation from the Southwest Loop to Old Omen Road. Whereas under his leadership, the church launched the first community-wide drug prevention campaign in partnership with TISD and the city of Tyler and developed a production aimed at teaching children the dangers of drugs and alcohol abuse performing for many years throughout Tyler. And whereas as associate pastor, Pastor Doug also created the Life of Christ annual production which reached thousands with the gospel each spring. Whereas as lead pastor, he oversaw multiple building expansions, implemented multiple new ministries, and launched a new Lindale campus. Whereas countless thousands of lives have been impacted and changed through the selfless ministry of Pastor Doug and Gina Anderson. Now therefore, I, Don Warren, Mayor of the City of Tyler, Texas, do hereby proclaim January 22nd is Doug and Gina Anderson Day and encourage all citizens to support this endeavor, not only for this day, but throughout the year. Thank you. Good morning. Morning, especially to Doug, to Gina, to be able to be here to honor you with this 40 year celebration and your family. Uh, 
32 years with you guys. We got lots to remember. It's by honor of my privilege this morning to represent our state senator, Brian Hughes, who could not be here as he is traveling across in another state, uh, but he sends his prayers, his blessings, and encouragement to you. He loves you guys. Brian has provided a uh, very nice Texas flag, and let me read the certificate. From the Texas state of Texas and the Texas Senate, <laughs> this certifies that the Texas flag herewith presented to Pastor Doug Anderson by Senator Brian Hughes was flown over the capital of the sovereign state of Texas in honor of his 40 years in the Lord's service, signed by Brian Hughes. <laughs> and from Sharon and myself, we love you. Good morning. Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, says in chapter 4, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Doug and Gina, you have lived a life worthy of the calling you have received. This is the evidence here today. It is truly an honor to present to you today a flag that has been flown over the United States Capitol that is going to signify the importance of this event and the impact that you've had on this community and this nation. Because of Christian soldiers like you, this nation has hope. Because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, this nation has hope. I want to tell you this is especially important to me today for two reasons. One, you may not know this, but as a young child, I came in and out of your children's ministry. I even spent time going to summer camp through this church as a young child. So the indelible effect of your ministry lives on and will live on for generations to come. I guarantee that. Second, this is my very first presentation of a Capitol flag as your United States Congressman, and I can tell you I can think of no better way to start than with this presentation today. Let me read for you the words on this certificate that accompanies it, and then I'm going to present you this flag. With most grateful appreciation and admiration of their 40 years of faithful and committed service to their ministry and all the preceding years in which they served the Lord and sought his will for their lives, along with all of the divine inspiration and practical guidance that they have provided to those countless souls they have touched through the leadership of Rose Heights Church in Tyler, Texas. In tribute to their dedication and tireless efforts on behalf of the citizens of East Texas, the state of Texas, and these United States of America, exhibiting exemplary character while selflessly serving their friends and neighbors through their numerous charitable endeavors and in recognition of their persevering efforts to follow the teachings and admonitions of Jesus Christ, I present to you this flag and certificate. Congratulations, Doug and Gina.
right. They asked a few of us to share some things on behalf of the entire Anderson family. Dad's wondering why in the world I have the mic. <laughs> on behalf of our entire family, we, we just wanted to share, we're just so grateful for all of you, especially um, Rose Heights family and beyond for standing in my parents' corner 40 years and especially you know, this last season that uh, they've been going through and just championing them and, and being there for them and for us as well. Uh, as long as he's been my father, you know, you've also been my pastor. And, you know, to me, on stage, off stage, at home, your, your character and your integrity is just, is always just top notch. And um, it's because it's not a performance. And uh, we just love and appreciate you so much, and we appreciate the entire church family. And to illustrate what I'm talking about, I do have a card in my pocket. Uh, went on my favorite uh, research platform, the Barna, and found one out of 10 full-time pastors will retire or finish their career as, as full-time pastors, only 10%. The average time that a pastor serves at a local church is three years. Um, and in a recent survey, 78% of pastors confidently shared that they felt distant from their family and loved ones due to the burden of ministry. And I can tell you, our family's never been stronger. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, dad was just, you're, you're just the funnest guy on stage and at home. And uh, I tried to do some math from Worship World uh, through to all the Sunday night services in the 90s, Mountain View through today, I've heard a minimum 1,872 sermons. <laughs> minimum, <laughs> approximate. And <clears throat> the greatest sermon you've ever preached has been this last year, and it, it hasn't been delivered on this platform from this mic. And we just love you and appreciate you. Rena? Just to follow up on what he said, I just want to thank every single one of you for being here today. It's just a big blessing for us and our family to be able to have such an awesome church family that celebrates my dad so well. Um, just to follow up on what Reese said, my dad has had 40 years of ministry that has touched a lot of people. And, you know, it's, it's a big church and it can seem a little overwhelming. But the thing for me is he's always been my dad. He's always been my pastor, but he's always done a really good job of making us feel like Doug's daughter and Doug's son, not the pastor's kid, not anything else, not anything more or less. Um, and I'm just so very grateful for that and um, just very grateful to be celebrating him today. We love you very much. Doug, just as your brother-in-law, I wanted to let you know, uh, don't laugh yet. Uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, you're on a very short list of, of men that I respect and admire. Uh, basically, it, it is Jesus Christ, my dad, and Doug Anderson. And uh, you mean a lot to me. Um, I've got so much respect for you as a pastor, but even more so the way you handle yourself as, as a husband, as a father, and just a man, uh, I honor you for that. And so uh, I did what any man does when he wants to express his feelings to another man, and uh, I wrote you a poem. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be touching. So here it goes. Doug, oh Doug, you're better than a bear rug. And just let me pause here and say, this, this would have been way easier if your name rhymed with like more poetic things, but I, I worked with what I had. Uh, <clears throat> 40 years of ministry, lots of highs and lows you've seen. Caring for people in their times of pain and celebrating with people on their important days. Of all the accolades you've done, it's hard to decide the greatest one. While I am proud of you for many things, I am most impressed when looking behind the scenes. 
from welcoming others to live in your home to caring for my parents as if they were your own. These are the things the newspapers might not see, but these are the things that mean the most to me. The way you love Ryan, Reese, Michael, and Rena, and especially the way you love and care for my sister Gina. Thank you for naming one of your kids, something that rhymed with, with Gina, by the way. <laughs> if I had to choose a word to describe Doug Anderson, to sum up all the great things you have done, one particular word comes to mind for me, and that word is the word consistency. <laughs> the same man you see in the pulpit is the same man at home or in the car, even when my dad was eating garlic and you had to drive him really far. <laughs> That's an inside joke that kind of became an outside joke as you drove further, didn't it, brother? Yeah. <clears throat> you never just preached things. You lived things. You did things. Your words hold more weight because of the living testimony of your faith. So we honor you, Doug, for your ministry career, but we also want to recognize that your ministry does not end here. It continues every day through the things you do and say, and it also continues through those of us that you've discipled along the way. I honor you for being an example of a strong and godly man, even though you sometimes wore a little man upon your hand. And I'm proud to be a part of your family. Although we're not related by blood, you're more than just my brother-in-law. You are my brother in love. There it is. Feel those feelings. We love you, Doug. God bless you. Nineteen and eighty-three was a significant year. The first thing we were doing, we were changing the name of the church from Tyler Church of God to the Rose Heights Church of God. But the most significant thing that was happening was that we hired for the first time a full-time children's pastor named Doug Anderson. This was the first day that I met you. It was at the old church on the loop, and I was four years old, and I, I don't remember the specifics of that day because I was a small child, but I'm positive it involved puppets and music and Jesus. I just remember there had never been like a dedicated children's church wherever we came from, and I think that was maybe one of the first ones. Um, he came to Rose Heights in 1983. I was, a, I was five years old, and I started out under his uh, ministry as a children's pastor at Rose Heights. I can't believe it's been 40 years. That even makes me feel old. So I was a baby when Doug and Gina first came to the church, and what's interesting is that Right around that time, my father left my mother and me. He began immediately having children's programs that were unbelievable and unheard of. And that was one of the things that we had missing in the growth that we were enjoying. And we needed someone to teach the children. And did we ever get a blessing from the Lord? Those memories are full of kids' crusades and kids' camps. There's a verse in the Bible in the hand of the man in the pew in the church on top of the hill. And I remember loving that song and loving doing that in Worship World. Uh, I'll forever have images in my mind of Doug standing at a humongous transparency machine with a Sharpie in his hand, drawing caricatures of Brother Dill and Bible characters. I loved Worship World. I remember him introducing John and Gina being Heidi Bird, and it was puppets, and we'd never seen that. And then there were black lights, and 
just so much stuff that I think any children's church now would be unheard of to not have. But it was amazing how he brought the story of Jesus in so many unbelievable, incredible ways that the children's department began to explode. By the end of that year, he had already brought out this ad full page in the paper. He brought out the, everyone in the community, everyone in East Texas. It was the talk of the town, the wonderful world of children. I had a unique perspective because I became really great friends with his son, Ryan. And so not only did I get to see him in the church, but I got to see him uh, in the home. I got to see what a Christian father looked like, what a Christian husband looked like. Ever since I was six years old, you two have been an integral part of my life at every stage. And our attendance began just to grow by leaps and bounds. And what a blessing, all of a sudden, we were just exploding and was already talked about we need new property. We need some new places. We've outgrown this. We were in the midst of looking for a youth pastor and Doug graciously stepped into that position and became a youth pastor for a little while until we hired a youth pastor. I was part of you know, his children's ministry, uh, youth ministry, all, all kinds of things. Y'all understood us as teenagers because y'all knew all we wanted to do was get away from our parents. But that worked out because our parents knew that we were with y'all, our church parents. You guessed it, Doug stepped into our college pastor because we decided at Rose Heights we needed to have a college and career pastor. I loved a youth group, I loved college and career with you guys, and I've loved these last 20 years as, as our senior pastor. Y'all even influenced my college choice. Um, yep, he became my young married pastor and I was married and, and was able to um, sit under his direction and leadership. I mean, after Children's Church, he was my interim youth pastor, then college and career, and then young married. And so I got to see him in ministry here at the church, but where he really impacted me was seeing what a man of God uh, did in his home and how he conducted himself with his family. And I'll forever be thankful for that. So Brother Doug, we love you and you have held every office every position in the church in the last 40 years. Thank you, Doug and Gina, for 40 years of dedication to others. You are a whosoever, and you are so loved. Doug, you'll probably never know uh, how much I love you and how much you mean to me and how different my life might have been without someone like you Thank you, Doug and Gina, for everything y'all have done for us. I'm so very thankful that I have had this privilege to walk with you guys for all of these years. I love you more than you know, and you are so very special to me and my family. Thank you for your service and congratulations on your 40 years of ministry. We would not have words to tell you how much we appreciate you and the way you've been used of the Lord to bring Jesus Christ to thousands upon thousands of children and been so instrumental in growing our church to where it is today. We love you. Y'all always understood what we needed. As little precious ones in worship world, y'all knew we needed black light puppets. Y'all knew we needed the kids crusade. Y'all knew we needed children of light. Doug always said, remember, Read your Bible, pray every day, and put God first. Three, two, one. The Kids Crusade is here. We're ready to give a cheer for you. We have the spirit. We have the power. Jesus is on top, and with him we will devour. The Kids Crusade is here. We're ready to give a cheer for you. <laughs> How in the world do you follow that? <laughs> well, I was chosen to 
transition kind of from the 80s to the 90s because Doug and I go back far enough that he had black hair and I had hair. Uh, <laughs> Penny and I uh, felt a call in our lives back in the 80s. And one day in 1989, we called Pastor Dill and just said, I actually said these words. I said, I'm calling you and I don't know why. Uh, but he graciously invited us down and made an offer. He said, if you will commit a year to us, we will commit a year to you. And we'll begin to work with you and train you. And that began our journey. And we began working with Tim Johnson, who's sitting over here, was a worship pastor at the time. And Penny was coming in the office that, during the week and working there, and it just wasn't cutting it with me. And I, I just still felt lost and floundering and not knowing what to do. One Sunday night, I came and I knelt in that corner, and I told God just the way I felt that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of trying to figure out what he wanted out of me. And so that night, we normally, we sat right over here, we normally hit the back door to get home. We lived an hour away to get our girls home uh, in the bed for school the next day. But Penny, for some reason, that day, that night, had to come around the front and talk with Tim about something. So I'm herding kids and coming around too, and Doug, you were walking across the stage this way, and you were about right here, and I was coming across there, and I was right there in the center. And out of the clear blue, you turned to me and pointed and said, hey, I need you to do Worship World for me next Sunday. I had never been in Worship World. And I said these words. I said, no, no way. But I had just told God in this corner over here, <laughs> if you'll open a door, God, I'll go through it. <laughs> so I turned to walk away from him, and it is, was as though I ran into a wall. And I turned around, and he was gone. So have you ever looked for someone in this church before? For the next 30 minutes, I'm running all over the church trying to find him. And I found you in the stairwell by Worship World. And I said, I don't know what in the world I'll do, but if you still want me to do it, I'll try. And uh, that was it. That's where our lives became interwoven. And I learned something about that man that day. When he says something, he hears the voice of God. Had you not heard that small voice of God, I wouldn't be here today. I don't know where I would be, but you opened the door for my ministry here. A year later, I was blessed to follow you as children's pastor. And in following you, uh, it, it meant that I was being molded by your ministry and the way that you saw things. I, I learned how to do things. And you told me some very important things. You told me you don't have to be me. You have to be you. You have to do what God tells you to do. But you nurtured and you and you led me. I remember that first that first Monday of being a staff member after I was on staff and we used to meet for Monday lunches, the staff and any members that could come. We were at Shoney's. It's over here on Troop in the loop. I'm with Doug. We're in line paying out. And he turns to me and says, you got any money, buddy? <laughs> I don't have my wallet on me. <laughs> that was day one and all kinds of stuff. I could stay up here for 35, 40 minutes because 34 years of being together. 34 years. We've uh, had some great times, <laughs> had some rough times. Uh, we got into a fuss one day, and one of the staff members said, y'all are about like an old married couple. <laughs> because we didn't always agree, but I always supported you. It was always what you needed to get done is what we got done. And I've learned something about you. Doug is a praying man. 
I can t- can't tell you how many times if a tough situation was coming up that he would say, give me some time to pray about this. And not once, not once did I ever doubt that when he prayed, he would hear from God. Not once. With all my heart, Doug, not once, buddy. I always trusted what you came out of that prayer room saying God had laid on your heart. And today, you see the evidence of that. 34 years, I love you, man, like a brother. I will uh, I'll fight for you, and you know that. I don't know what I've done without you being in my life. I don't know. Because we've had good times. We've shared a lot of Mountain Dew and crackers. <laughs> I could tell you some other things, but I probably better not tell those today. Um, I will say one thing. <laughs> Penny's supposed to tell me when I'm out of time. Um, so we were getting ready for my first kids crusade that I was actually in charge of. Or, yeah, I guess. I wasn't in charge of it. I was his helper in it. And he said, because uh, I came from a concrete company, so he saw an old concrete guy that he saw something in that he could use. And so he tells me, he says, we got, a, we got a trailer we need to go get and load up the Kids Crusade stuff in it. So I made a connection to the concrete company I worked for to get a truck to pull the trailer with. So I go over to get the trailer. What he failed to tell me was the trailer was still full of Life of Christ stuff. <laughs> and he was busy that day. So me and one other guy went and unloaded the Life of Christ stuff to get it ready for Kids Crusade. And those things just happened off and on all the time. But Doug, I got my keys. (laughs) He lost his keys about 100 times. And he would always say, buddy, you got your keys on you? And I would say, if I got my britches on, I got my keys on me. (laughs) Doug, I love you. I'll never, ever be able to tell you how much you mean to me. And how much I appreciate you hearing from God that night, turning and pointing to me and saying, will you do worship role for me next Sunday? Because you were the key to my ministry. And I appreciate you for that. Thank you so much for it. Doug has always known that story is a vital method of connecting with people. Christ himself used parables to reach many people in simplistic form, but with deep, significant meaning. Whether drama, comedy, or many other artistic forms, Doug has always embraced the power of great characters and an engaging tale. Here is a brief look at some of his amazing productions and performances.
Doug, Doug, Doug. Boy, we go back a ways, don't we? Man, I'll never forget the phone call I got in the early 90s when you said, Mike, do you like to sing and dance? I thought, finally, somebody's asking. I'd only been practicing for about 30 years. I'd only been attending Rose Heights a few years. I was only a Christian a few years. But there we were, singing and dancing in clown face, telling kids about the dangers of drugs and the goodness of God. And all those Life of Christ pageants, the hours of rehearsal, and all the ministry that took place. And the Sundays, so many sermons, so many services together. You're the only guy I know that can make me laugh, cry, and think all at the same time. So thank you for your friendship, for all the laughter, for the tears, the Rangers games, your leadership, and your example. And even after Lois and I moved to Forney, Texas in 2015, I still always thought of you as my pastor, but mostly my buddy Doug. We love you, and we're praying for you. And in the words of my friend Bummer the Clown, Congratulations, Doug. How many years has it been? Uh, one, two, three, 40 years? Wow. I met Doug and Gina Anderson the day they landed in Tyler, Texas, and they have been dear, dear friends to me all these years. But Doug has had so many amazing ideas, Life of Christ, The Chair, Final Destination, productions that really, really made a big impact on this community. I played John the Beloved in The Life of Christ, and me and Doug would be standing off stage, and I would say to him, Doug, how do you feel about playing Jesus? He goes, well, Dan, this is the way it works. I leave Doug Anderson right here where we're standing, and the Holy Spirit walks out on that stage. Not Doug Anderson, the Holy Spirit. Being on that stage and watching Doug portray Jesus, I'd ask myself, I wonder if that's what Jesus is really like. After these 40 years of him and Gina's ministry, I can tell you, I've seen Jesus. I've seen Jesus in them. So on this special day of celebrating Doug and Gina Anderson and what you've meant to this Rose Heights family, I wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've meant to me. Help me, Jesus. I'm Doug's brother. And you from the 90s will know what that means. Uh, every time somebody's seen me after we came to church, uh, hey, you're Doug's brother. And if, and if they introduce me to one of their friends, they say, hey, this is Johnny. Johnny, this is Doug's brother. <laughs> Even Pastor Deal called me Doug's brother. <laughs> you know what? It's an honor to be Doug's brother. I have lots of brothers. And when people call me Doug's brother till today, it makes me proud because I'm so proud of him, him and Gina and, and the work they've done. Hey, John. Hey, Doug's brother. <laughs> you know, I remember as kids, I wasn't always glad to be Doug's brother. Doug got saved when he was six years old, y'all. Six years old. And he stayed the whole time. Never wavered. He, you could tell he was saved as a child. He wasn't a tattletale or nothing like that, but he told the truth. If mama asked him what happened to this, he would tell the truth. You know, and I, I probably got saved 30, 40 times by the time I was 20. <laughs> but, <laughs> and it still didn't stick. And, and uh, I'm so impressed with, uh, with Doug uh, dedicating his life to what he has, and that's to the, the business of the Lord, him and Gina. So uh, we came to, my wife and I came to Rose Heights in 1997, and, and you seen the, uh, oh my 
my goodness, get me off of there. <laughs> they, they seen me, uh, they, 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 the play Final Destination. Uh, I, I was lost as a goose, guys. I mean, I'm not going to get into the story. This is, this is Doug's day, but uh, I was sitting about right there. I could walk back there, but I don't, it'll make me tired. Sitting right there. <laughs> Watching the program and and Doug played was playing Jesus and 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 the Holy Spirit. When Doug come down the aisle as Jesus, I did not see my brother. I seen Jesus. I really seen Jesus. And and these, there's a lot of things I learned that night. I, I thought the devil would tell me that uh, you can't be saved again. You didn't run out of chances. You 30, 40 times. I mean, it's over for you. And you know how he does. He gets in your head. But um, the, the airplane scene, and uh, Doug had no idea I would even be here to see that. I lived a 1,000 miles away. I missed the first 15 years of his ministry. I didn't even know what he was doing and unless I went to Mama's house for once in a while. And she said, oh, Doug's doing this play, and, and he's playing Jesus, and he's so great. Doug rode his unicycle around the loop, and I'm thinking, well, maybe a loop's like a parking lot, you know. So... Uh, <laughs> But anyway, when I got out here, I drove my car around the loop. <laughs> 25 miles it is. And I almost got hit four or five times in a car. How in the world he done that, I don't know. But, but uh, he so took his talent. All nine of us kids got a talent. And I look back and Doug multiplied his and multiplied his. And we all did. But Doug... The difference between him and me, he, he used his talents for the glory of God and to, and to save lost souls. And, uh, I, and I realized that when we come to Tyler. And uh, the play was so, uh, one character was so like me on the plane that crashed. And, uh, you know, there was some good people on that plane, but they didn't know the Lord. And, and hell was over here. And, and man, this thing opened up and, and flames shot up to the roof and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, maybe that is hell. It ain't burning the building. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit told me, you don't have to believe in hell to go there. And then that was a realization to me. It, it, it was real. And then, and then the, the, the heaven scene, I mean... Um, Doug was up there and, and it was Jesus and it was Jesus and then there was people there and this, this older gentleman was holding a baby and uh, I lost an infant daughter back in the 80s and, uh, and, and my dad in the 80s and, and, I, and I seen my dad holding my daughter a little cherub you know and, and I gave my heart to the Lord Standing right there, very quietly, without anybody, and no, and it's and it's Doug and Gina, his ability to, like a lot of people have said, to do different things to bring them to Christ. I, I wasn't coming to church; I was coming to see a play. I was all about that. hadn't been to church in 15 years, or except for somebody's wedding or something, but. You know, um, he so used his talents for the glory of God and to bring lost souls to Jesus. And Pastor Deal was the pastor at that time when I came. And, and they got me involved. That's what this church does. If, if you walk away from this church because you're not involved in something, it, it's you. Because there's so much to get involved with with this church. We've done productions. You know, that was in August when I got saved. Easter, I was actually in, in one of these plays, you know. I mean, me. Um, I, I played a drunk and a drug addict. I mean, I really. <laughs> but, but, you know, it was easy. <laughs> I mean, I had it down. I just didn't know when I was supposed to go and, and penny was a saint. She always told me when to go. <laughs> Penny wasn't there, I would panic. I'm like, I'm drunk, I'm drugged up. I, I don't, 
I don't know when to go. Where, where's Penny? You know, and and she would always say, "Go." And and my wife Megan played a single mom, and we were involved in the church. We taught in children's church. What I'm saying is, they discipled us, and Doug has been a spiritual father to me. And uh, even though he, I'm older than him, he he's been the father I didn't have, a, a spiritual father, my pastor. I respect his pulpit. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even be up here if he wasn't really retired. So he, he knows better than let me get up here with a microphone. No, but, but Doug, I love you and Gina. But you know, him multiplying his talents. Um, I think it was 1982, you and Gina got married. He doubled his talents then when she agreed to marry him. And And I love them with all of my heart. And I could, I, I was like, Bo, I could stay here three days and, and I would still couldn't tell you the things they'd done for us. Learn, te- taught us how to be good Christians. My wife and I taught us so much how to, how to you know, when, when we stayed in their house, I'd been out living a different lifestyle so long. We moved in, in Doug and Gina's house. They took us in. He's working two jobs. He can't, you know, and and it was like living with, with Ozzy and Harriet, you know. <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know, nobody's, you know, our, our dad wasn't a Christian. My mom was, but but Doug and Gina showed us what a real marriage looks like, and just not by telling us, just by watching them. He is the same man here as he is in Walmart or in traffic or at home. He's so stinking funny. <laughs> and, I, and I love him dearly. And, and uh, I guess my time's up. So, I, I'm, <laughs> But I just want to thank you and, and Gina and Doug for your 40 years dedicating your life. You could have took your talents and, and done anything with them, been a wealthy man with the talents that you have, but you chose to use them for the glory of God and sinners. And, and, it, and if you think you can't get saved right where you said him, you can. Don't let, don't let the devil tell you you can't. And, and don't let him tell you that, that the Lord is not wanting you back because he's waiting He'll run to you guys, and uh, uh, I don't know. I shouldn't say that just back there, but but anyway, thank you so much, Doug and Gina, for your 40 years of service, and, and I love you. Doug and Gina, Yvette and I are so honored to have this opportunity to congratulate you on 40 years of ministry. Wow, 40 years. (laughs) You've come a long way from the old Lee College days, and we are so proud of you. Thank you for your friendship, your encouragement, uh, your example, and your influence, your influence on our lives, your influence in the East Texas community and in the kingdom of God around the world cannot be overstated. So proud of you. I want to say that we're praying for you. We love you and God bless you. Hey, Doug, congratulations on 40 years of ministry. In uh, biblical history, those 40 year periods have great significance, and I believe your life and ministry carries great significance as well. Thank you for your faithfulness to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in your teaching and your preaching. Thank you for your faithfulness in marriage to your family. And we just bless you, honor you, I respect you, and I love you in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you, brother. Hey, Rose Heights, this is Doug Clark from Grace Community here in Tyler. And on this day that you celebrate your pastor, Doug Anderson, I wanted to chime in and say how grateful I am for his partnership with me and with this community to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into East Texas. I mean, he has been faithful to lead you in loving one another and loving God and loving the lost. 
and I'm grateful for his ministry. I know that, uh, that God is going to tell him, well done, good and faithful servant. But I also wanted to say to you on behalf of our church, we are grateful for how he has faithfully served, how he has faithfully led and faithfully and humbly connected people to Jesus. Thank you so much, Doug. We're grateful for you. Hey, Pastor Doug, I want to reach out and just tell you how incredible this mile marker is in the life of the church and in your life for you and Miss Gina. And I just want to say thank you for the way that you serve Tyler. Thank you for the way that you serve the kingdom. Thank you for the way that you are an example uh, to all of us and the way that you display uh, the compassion, the kindness and love of Jesus through your life. And you are uh, a hero to all of us. And I just want you to know how much you are loved and appreciated. Uh, we pray for you. We pray for the church often. And so thank you for the way that you have served over the past 40 years. I want to send out a great greeting and congratulations to my friend, Pastor Doug Anderson, for the great job you've done at Rhodes Highs for all these years. You know, you've been a strong person for the church and for the Tyler community. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And I just want to say the name Doug Anderson is a great name in our community. Thank you and congratulations, and you are in our prayers. Hello, my name is Kim Beckham. I just uh, finished up a 35-year ministry at Central Baptist Church here in Tyler, Texas. And during that time, it's been my pleasure to be a fellow pastor in this community with Doug Anderson. And it's a joy to get to say a word of appreciation to him on his 40th anniversary in ministry. I've met a lot of pastors, done a lot of ministry with a lot of different people throughout the years. Unfortunately, not every pastor is worthy of praise, but Doug Anderson is. As I've told many people through the years, he's the real deal. So congratulations to you, Doug. Congratulations to Gina. Know that you're highly valued and you made a difference not only in this church and in this community, but you made a positive difference in my life. Happy anniversary. Doug and Gina, we wanted to uh, send you a video and say how much we uh, love and appreciate you. Um, when we served on the council, uh, I'm a little bit uh, type A personality and so uh, I'm sure I've said some things that uh, shocked and surprised Doug at times, but he's always been gracious and kind and still is. And we just consider both of you uh, great friends. And I know Gina and Jan have uh, really journeyed through life uh, together uh, since childhood. But we just want to say thank you for being great examples of uh, ministers. And uh, we want to finish strong like you. We love you guys and appreciate you so much and your friendship more than anything. Gina, I've always said when I grow up, I want to be like you. Um, anyway, I just love y'all so much and um, admire your leadership, your abilities that you have in leadership. And yay for y'all. Pastor Doug and blessing Rose Highs Church. Let me say Big, big thanks for your ministry, Pastor Doug. Special thanks for all your 40 years. It's something unbelievable. Big, big thanks from all my Ukrainian church, Ukrainian team. And thanks for everything, for staying with Ukraine. Special thanks for you like my co-father and co-grandfather. At one point, we have special gift for you. This is the, the patch, patch. This is the patch, our chaplain's battalion. Uh, my son and uh, and your son also last year give this for you. This is special, special gift from my team for you. Thanks for everything. God bless you. We pray you. Uh, we pray about you and staying with you. God bless you, brother. My congratulations. Rubber. Hello, precious ones. Make it so, Captain. Shh. Do you love him, church? 
Hello, men of God. Hello, Benjamin. Rub up. Oskosh by gosh. Well, double hallelujah. Vision. Very funny. Humility. Extraordinary. Faithful and graceful. Spirit led. Consistent. Compassionate. Prayerful. Creative. Thank you, Pastor Doug and Miss Gina, for always making us feel welcomed and loved. Thank you for being a leader. Thank you for being a role model. Thank you for being the excellence of a pastor. Pastor Doug, we just want to thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of ministry with you and a wonderful journey and uh, sharing kindred hearts in the arts of ministry. And we love you and appreciate you so much. Thank you, Pastor Doug, for your humble servant leadership. Thanks for letting me serve with you all these years, Pastor Doug. Doug, thank you for encouraging me to always be creative and to always do more. Thank you so much for giving me a shot. We had a wonderful marriage, buddy. Thank you, Pastor Doug, for allowing Anna to walk alongside of you during the last four years of ministry. You are indeed an extraordinary leader. We love you and Gina very much. Thanks, Doug, for 34 years together, man. Who ever thought it? Pastor, thank you for your vision, your wisdom, your grace, and most importantly, for hearing God for us and for our church family. We love you. Good morning. I'm here today as a friend, a very proud member of Rose Heights, and a member of the community to thank you, Pastor, and Gina for 40 years of amazing service, not just to the family here at Rose Heights, but to the broader East Texas community, but also to congratulate you on your new role as Pastor Emeritus. The role of pastor is prescribed in Ephesians 4, when the Lord wrote that he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some teachers, and some pastors for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, and the edifying of the body of Christ. And over the last six years, Pastor, that Karen and I have been very proud members of Rose Heights, you have spoken into our personal lives on many occasions, and you have helped perfect us and edify us in critical ways. As some of you know, about three years ago, my family went through a pretty uh, major spiritual battle. But what most of you don't know is that Pastor and Gina stood by us literally the entire way. They spoke both prophetic words into our lives, many that we're still holding on for today. They showed us a great deal of love and compassion, and again, you mean the world to us. Your love and compassion for us is absolutely remarkable. Thank you. But we're just two people, Karen and I. Out of all of you that are here today, I'm sure each of you has a major story that you can tell about your engagement and interaction with Pastor and with Gina over the last 37 years here at Rose Heights. There are literally thousands upon thousands that they have impacted. So again, thank you for perfecting and edifying the church. Now, the word emeritus is actually an old Latin word that scholars have traced back to the 17th century. The word means to earn one's discharge by service. To earn one's discharge by service. It was originally used to describe soldiers who had completed their service to their country and earned their discharge. And that's why Pastor Emeritus is a very befitting title for you going forward. You have been the spiritual leader of this ministry for nearly 40 years, both of you. And in other churches, they may call you the general, if you will of this ministry because you've helped equip us to uh, go to battle spiritually speaking to put on the full armor of God 
whether we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness or the shield of faith or girding our loins with truth or shotting our feet with the gospel uh, or wearing the helmet of the hope of salvation and certainly using the sword of the spirit. Every single Sunday, uh, you are sharing the word of God, the unadulterated word of God, and we owe you a great deal of gratitude. Again, that title, Pastor Emeritus, is very befitting, giving the service that you have shown us here in this wonderful ministry. So again, you have discharged your duties very effectively, sir. Both of you have over the last 40 years, and you've earned your title. And while, again, I believe this title is very befitting, I believe that the best is still yet to come for you. You have a great deal left in the tank. We get together for coffee about every other week, maybe every three weeks, give or take. And the Lord has a strong blessing on your life. And so if the last 40 years are any indication of the impact that you can have, the Lord is going to continue to do great things through your life and through your ministry. I know you have talked about being uh, a, an evangelist, but who knows? You may go on to be a prophet. Give us some of the words you've given me. I have no idea. But the Lord knows what he has for you, what he has for you both, and that is what is most important. So thank you so much for being obedient to the Lord, for serving here in this wonderful ministry and being a great leader, a great counselor, a great spiritual father for many, spiritual mother for many, and a wonderful pastor. Thank you both. Thank you. Anderson, on behalf of the Church of God Executive Committee, I want to say to both of you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, and how much we admire your work and your ministry that has been given for these 40 years unto the Lord Jesus Christ. What an impact. What an influence, what a difference. From right there on the platforms of the Rose Heights Church of God, you have literally touched a world, not just a city, not just a region, but the world. Through your love of the gospel, through your love of world missions, you have made it your focus to tell as many people as you could about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know the Father has been pleased. Rose Heights, thank you so much for honoring your pastor today. And this man and woman of God is worthy of every accolade, all of the applause, worthy of double honor. Well, special greetings to all of you beautiful people at Rose Heights. And very special greetings to my wonderful friend and friends, Doug and Gina Anderson. Wow, how time flies. You and Gina have been people of great character, incredible creativity, and excellent leadership as you followed the Lord in his will for your life. You know, I looked at your record, Doug, uh, here at headquarters from your reports. Uh, you were first credentialed in the Church of God in 1985, became an ordained bishop in 1990. And over those years, you have preached 2,600 and 85 sermons. Now here's what's important. Of those sermons, which are, they are a lot of sermons, you have led 5,749 people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Almost 1,000 people have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And 1,299 have been baptized in water. It's a shame you couldn't have found one more person to baptize to make that an even 1,300. But here's, some, here's something else. You've received 2,200 members into the Church of God. Doug, Gina, do you know that in the history of the church there are very, very few men who have had as fruitful and successful numerical life of ministry working in the vineyard of God. I want you to know what a happy day this is when we come together to celebrate the two of you. Doug, Gina, Peggy and I love you with all of our hearts. We love you and our prayers are with you. All you wonderful people at Rose Heights, thank you for providing this great day. God bless you.
Well, hi, I'm Pastor Mark Williams, and what a joy it is for me to join with each of you today to honor and pay tribute to the incredible ministry of Doug and Gina Anderson. You know, Gina's family, Gina, I, our families go back all of our lives, and Doug, you as well have been a lifelong friend and colleague, and together we have watched how God has used you in spectacular ways. I don't know anyone, anyone who has been more creatively gifted and prophetically inspired to be able to speak, write, and lead than Doug and Gina Anderson. Your ministry in Tyler, Texas at Rose Heights, your ministry in a more broader sense that has literally touched the world is bearing fruit. So many of us who have come under your influence have not only been inspired, but now a whole new generation is rising to be able to carry forward the ministry that God has granted unto you. And it's all because of your faithfulness, your stewardship, and your love and your grace. You know, the thing I love about you both is I never leave from your presence without feeling a sense of acceptance. How true that is with people that come each and every week to Rose Heights. No one ever leaves feeling unseen. No one ever leaves feeling unheard. No one ever leaves feeling undervalued because of the personal gifts that each of you have. It's kind of with mixed emotions that I celebrate this day because I know that there are extenuating circumstances that perhaps have brought us to this day at a time that maybe you did not particularly have in mind. However, I want to assure you that the days ahead, Doug and Gina, are truly filled with the promise of God. I know the battle that you fight in your body is very real, but be assured, even from 2 Kings chapter 6, that you are not alone. You are not outnumbered. This will come to an end. Those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. So from Sandra Kay, from our entire congregation here at North Cleveland, congratulations. We love you, and we look forward to what God is going to do as you both move into the role of Pastor Emeritus. What a joy it is to be able to greet all of you at Rose Heights Church of God today. On behalf of the entire World Missions family, we want to send special greetings and our love and our blessings to Pastor Doug and Gina Anderson as they transition from 40 years of labor there to Pastor Emeritus. Pastor Doug, you know that we love you here at World Missions. You've been such a vital part of what we have been doing globally. Uh, you have helped us advance the gospel throughout the world, a very active member of Church of God World Missions Board of Directors. So we just wanted to stop by today and with everyone else that's greeting, send greetings to you. Remember this, as I have told you privately, we still believe God, we trust God, we hold to our faith, and we just know in our spirits that God has a great plan for you, that he will bless you going forward. And we're believing God for a divine miracle in your body. We love you. We bless you all today. Thank you so much for letting us stop by and give you this greeting. Well, my, how time flies from South Carolina Youth Camp across half the United States. I've been watching Doug Anderson and then the great addition of Gina to make one of the most outstanding pastoral teams and all the church of God. And he is saluted as a man who loves his church and a man who can make smooth transitions. And what a work you've done. You and these kids of yours have touched the lives of so many people. You know, I started my ministry as a children's pastor way down in Dillon, South Carolina. That's where you probably run into me first. And what transition that is. But when you can preach to children, you can preach to anyone. And Doug, you and Gina have been excellent in discipling children. And now we come down here and you have got 40 years of ministry. And that's what we salute today. Only God knows 
the children, the young people, the adults, young adults, even people our age have been touched by your life and your ministry. What, what a testimony to this generation because you've been doing this in the midst of a transitional world. Boy, I tell you, if anything has changed in 40 years, it's been the church of God. And you've been steady and you've kept the church aright. And that's what you're known for. So I come today and tell you, Doug and Gina, 40 years is worth celebrating. And I've been praying for you. And as you know, Doug, I've got a special place that you and I Set that I pray and call your name, and you can't tell anybody all about that because that's our secret. But I am so honored today that you would ask me to come by and just highlight and look at what you have done for the kingdom of God. And I would say this, Doug, you and Gene are faithful, faithful. Not always knowing why life does what it does, but you have been faithful. And second thing, you have been a family man, first and foremost. And I know you've been through difficult tragedies in those times, but you have been faithful. And you have been such a leader in the church. Calmness and direction in crucial times. That's who you are. I'm just honored today to know that somebody called me and asked me to say something about one of the greatest ministerial teams that the church of God has ever produced. We love you. The church loves you. We believe God's going to really be close by and strengthen you and sustain you. And to be pastor emeritus, that is an achievement. And I pray God's blessings on you and his strength and help for your family. And these children you've got, they've been touching the Lord and they're going to touch the world. And your work is going to continue on till Jesus comes. Again, may God bless you, buddy. And this may be a special day for you and Gina, one that you'll never forget. 40 years in ministry. I'm not even brave enough to tell you how long I've been around, but God bless you. And may this be a wonderful day that you'll always look forward to. Bless you, Doug. Bless you, Gina, on this special day. Pastor, you certainly are a man to be honored. I came across this quote that kind of is fitting following some of his words. It says, there are no great men. There are only great challenges which ordinary men like you and me are forced by circumstances to meet. As you think back through the life and ministry of Pastor Doug, it's been lots of circumstances, lots of challenges along the way, but you have stood faithfully you have arisen to the occasion and have been faithful. That word has just been repeated throughout all of these messages today of just how faithful you are. You know, several years ago, many years ago, I should say, it wasn't several years ago, it was 20 years ago, I had never heard of Pastor Doug Anderson. I was sitting in a small church in Hawaii and Pastor Dill had came to our island and to our church to pastor our church and as I was sitting there one day, I was listening. You know, we didn't have any insulation and those, there was no confidentiality in our offices. And I listened for many days and weeks as Pastor Dill was on the phone regarding some of the transitions that were taking place here at Rose Heights. And one of my most vivid memories, I had heard about this legacy of this man who had created the life of Christ, who was the most gifted children's pastor that existed, and all of these things that I had of Doug Anderson, of whom I had never met. And I remember this specific moment, not ever feeling I would ever have the opportunity to meet you in person, but I remember that Sunday morning when the church took the vote and made Doug and Gina Anderson, the senior pastors, the lead pastors, we changed the name, I don't know what you were then, of Rose Heights Church. And what a privilege it has been through the last 20 years to get to know you, to get to learn from you, to grow from your ministry. And I know that I, among many others, will be changed and have been changed by your faithfulness in ministry and your friendship more than anything. Pastor Dill, it's great to have you. Would you and Miss Linda please stand? Pastor, Pastor, 
Pastor Dill and Sister Linda. Between these, between these two couples represents 45 years of ministry right here at Rose Heights. 25 for Pastor Dill and uh, 20 for Pastor Doug. 37 in total, but 20 is our lead pastor. And Pastor Dill wrote this letter to you, Doug and Gina. Dear Doug and Gina, what a joy to celebrate your 40th anniversary of serving East Texas side by side. Your testimonial of love and dedication towards God and one another does not go unnoticed. As Linda and I reflect on your many years of service, I am reminded of the scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, that states two are better than one, because if either of you fall, the other will lift you up. These verses further state that though one may be overpowered, together they can defend themselves. Doug and Gina you have such an awesome and wonderful legacy at Rose Heights Church. Linda and I feel grateful to have been a part of the journey. I recall the day that you both and Ryan stepped off the plane in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1983. You had come to Tyler to be interviewed for the position of children's pastor, and there were several other members from the church who had joined us. Doug we had heard through the grapevine that you hated eating chicken because as a child, you were the one who had to chop their heads off. And so after a few moments of getting acquainted, being the good greeters that we were, I told you we had arranged a wonderful evening. Our first order of business was dinner at a great restaurant that specialized in chicken. <laughs> Throughout the conversation, we were able to keep our composure. I actually saw your entire countenance change, but somehow you were able to smile and say, thank you, I really appreciate that. None of us let you know the stunt that we had pulled until we drove up to a wonderful steakhouse. We all laughed until we cried. Doug and Gina, you both have imparted such wisdom and kindness to so many. Your commitment has always been centered around Colossians 3.23. Whatever I do, I will, make, I will work with all of my heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Whatever assignment we gave you, you both always followed through. You were never afraid to step into uncharted waters. It's difficult to remember all the hats we asked you both to wear through the years, but I'll try. You served as children's pastor, youth pastors, singles pastors, choir director, over hospitality ministry, directing fundraising, fundraiser campaigns, construction foremen as we renovated the old facility off the Southeast Loop 323, and offering training sessions all over the United States on how to grow children's ministries. The list is endless. Doug, there is one particular moment that stands out to me. It was when you stepped into my office, telling me you were going to go on an extended 39-day fast, requesting to spend time in solitude during this period. You followed through with your commitment, and as you recall, a great revival broke out in our church. Doug and Gina, the word admire does not come close to our feelings for you. We are grateful to have had the opportunity to know you both and witness the love, strength, and unity that you have shared throughout the years. So again, congratulations on this wonderful milestone. We wish you both love, happiness, and blessings. Sincerely, James and Linda Deal. Pastor, we thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Um, You'll direct your attention to the screen to show some of the visionary years from Pastor Doug. Doug Anderson is truly a one-of-a-kind visionary. His dreams of reaching his congregation, our community, and the entire world began right here at 2120 Old Omen Road in Tyler, Texas. Doug has always had a big heart for children, as they are the future of the church. This is why here at Rose Heights, our kids program is called Kids First. Seeing this importance, Doug embarked on a vision to revitalize the kids' area in 2005 with rooms literally filled with stories of the Bible. 
These rooms made the Bible tangible for children. Rooms with creation, Moses, Jonah, and many more. Once completed, Doug's vision turned to the main sanctuary. He envisioned a room that could support a larger stage for productions, live band, or special events. The sanctuary was revitalized in 2006. As the church began growing, they quickly realized they needed more room. The One Vision, One Purpose campaign was launched. It was a large campaign, creating many new areas to serve the church and the community. From my heart, I shared it with the rest of the leadership team, and the leadership team has refined it, developed it, and now we as a leadership team want to present it to this body because we are family. Our vision is simply to reach. Simplistic, isn't it? Our vision is to reach people. Our purpose is to love, to love one another, to love others, to love God. The first piece was an area to hold events and services for youth. In 2008, the church turned what used to be a gym into a multi-purpose room for youth named the Ryan Anderson Student Center in honor of Doug's late son. But Doug's vision was just beginning. The next phase was to focus on how Rose Heights could reach out to the local community. Construction soon began on a community life center. This amazing multi-purpose building would allow the community to hold parties, events, play sports, and focus on their physical well-being. The Community Life Center truly is a great benefit to our community and an incredible place for everyone to come and fellowship. A few years later, Doug began to have vision for something new, something creative, unique, and far-reaching. In 2014, Doug envisioned a media ministry to take what Rose Heights is all about and show it to the entire world. Harnessing technology and creativity, the media ministry was launched in 2015 and began live streaming on the internet. By 2017, Rose Heights was broadcasting services on local television and cable channels across East Texas. This ministry has since touched thousands and thousands of people, both locally and across the world as well. The church grew. More services were added, more staff were hired, and God continued to bless Rose Heights Church. Under Doug's vision and leadership, a new idea was born. Hi, I'm Doug Anderson, lead pastor of Rose Heights Church in Tyler. Thanks for landing on this page and checking out the amazing opportunity we have to establish a thriving Rose Heights Satellite Church in Lindale. I'm excited to announce that we will plan to launch the Lindale Church Campus in early 2020. An incredible opportunity literally fell into Doug's lap a local church in Lindale, Texas. Rose Heights Lindale underwent construction in 2019 and launched with an enormous response in 2020. Then COVID hit. The church closed and we wondered what went wrong. The main Tyler campus closed as well, but we continued services online and by broadcast television. Thanks to the power and purpose of the media ministry, Rose Heights Church remained strong through one of the hardest periods in history. A few months later, both campuses reopened. Through the steadfast leadership of Doug Anderson and the blessings of God, Rose Heights has grown and expanded and has seen God do amazing things. Doug, thank you for being willing to listen to God's vision for Rose Heights and for being faithful in pursuing it. Unfortunately, I have to follow all these other people, and I would have preferred to have been earlier, but since I'm last, I can take longer. Uh, you know, from the early days of the children's ministry, I was one of the first ones, and uh, Brother Dill read a letter that a group of us came to Shreveport to get you off the airplane. I was one of those. So I can honestly say that I've known you longer than 99% of the people here. And, you know, you're... Your concept of children's ministry 
Brother Dill's concept of letting you use your vision, letting you use your talents, not constraining you, but turning you loose. And you've been running rampant ever since. Uh, you fulfilled many roles here. Um, I think there was even a passing reference to you serving in the music department when we were in between music ministers once as choir director for a few services. Uh, they didn't let you stay there very long. Uh, but everywhere else you stayed a long time. Uh, your vision has inspired me. As a lay person, as a local person committed to serving the Lord in a local church, you've given me a place to do that. You've not restrained our congregation. You've let our congregation reach out. You've let our congregation be part of your vision and part of your ministry. You know, your, your, um, your vision for media is probably the most impressing to me because in our church, we had a lot of people that were still struggling to turn on a computer, uh, including myself. And when you presented this, it was with X dollars, and then it became 2X, and, and some of us began to say, uh, are you sure you heard from the Lord? <laughs> and then it became 3X, and we really wondered if you had heard from the Lord. And then the, the media ministry was introduced, it began to flourish, and then COVID hit. And I have to say that just as one member of this church, I think your vision for the media ministry is what saved our church because we were able to flourish in the media ministry. We were able to do what God called us to do and called you to lead us in doing. And so, you know, with all these visions though, I have to tell you, there is one thing that if we're not careful goes unsaid, and that is your love for the Word of God. Your love for the Word of God never ceased we were told repeatedly about the word. We were taught from the word. We were taught from the word as inspired by your voice through the Holy Spirit. And with all of these visions and how wonderful they are and how great they are, nothing compares to you telling us to read the word of God and to serve God according to his word. Not only did you have a, uh, a love for the Word of God, you had love for God's people. But I want to say you went beyond love for God's people and love for the community. You know, when you introduced the concept of the, what was used to be called Family Life Center, you wanted to use a different word. You wanted to use the word community because you wanted to reach out beyond these four walls. And you wanted to get out into the community. And so you named it the Community Life Center. And with these many years of service and many years of work that you've done for the Lord, I want to say that the leadership team has made a decision to rename the Community Life Center the Doug Anderson Community Life Center. <laughs> We also have another person to recognize here today, and that's your wife, Gina. I don't want to take anything away from you, Doug, but I think that you will allow me just a few moments to reflect upon the support that Gina has been for you and for this church. Probably some of the women could have done better at this, but I got the mic, so I get to talk about <laughs> Gina a little bit. Uh, Gina has been a part of this ministry and for those of you that haven't been here a long time, uh, she was an integral part of the children's ministry. Her talents with Heidi Bird, uh, her talents with music, her talents with musical instruments, with singing, even her talents with ventri ventriloquism. Not quite as good as Doug, but she pushed him to be better because he didn't ever want to say he wasn't any better than his wife. So she pushed him to be better. And Gina, from your role as a mother, your role as a wife, your role as a pastor's wife, your role as a friend to many, many women here and men, 
and the support that you've given Doug through all these years is not unrecognized by this congregation. And we want to say thank you for all that you've done. And we want to thank you. Pastor, in addition to recognizing the Community Life Center, we have a special plaque to present to you that will be something you can take with you and cherish with the thoughts that this church loves you, the thoughts that this congregation loves you, and the thoughts that the people love you most of all. God bless you. We're praying for you daily. We're praying for Gene and all the family. And we just want to thank God for loaning you to Rose Heights for these many years. God bless you. Would you like to stand for just a moment? What an amazing man, what an amazing couple, an amazing family that God has entrusted to Rose Heights. Pastor Doug and Gina, we are so thankful for you and the 40 years of ministry, 37 to Rose Heights. This morning, we're going to honor Pastor Doug and Gina with a special offering. This is in addition to, to your tithe and offering. And if you would like to participate in that, you may simply grab one of the offering tithe envelopes out of the seat back in front of you. For those of you who would like to give online, you can open the app. Simply in the special offering section of that, you can enter the amount. And if you scroll down just a little bit further, there's a place where you can add a message. If you are giving online a special gift to our pastors, please be sure to write Pastor Doug and Gina Anderson in that special note so that it allows it to go to the right place. We are so thankful for our pastors and the gift that they are to this body. And the scripture says that there our people of honor are worthy to be honored and we want to honor them today. And so if you would like to honor them with us, we would ask you to prepare to do so now. If you'd bow your heads, I'd like to pray over that offering. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this opportunity to bless our pastors. Lord, what a blessing they have been to our lives. Lord, they have sought your heart. They have sought to hear your voice. Lord, they have sought your vision for your people. And Lord, in our dark moments when we couldn't see, they sought you for the way in which to lead us. Lord, we are so grateful for them. 40 years of faithfulness. Lord, today we wanna to bless them. So Lord, as we receive this offering, these gifts, we ask, Father, that you would multiply it in a great way to minister to them and to their needs. We give you thanks and we long to honor them for they are certainly worthy to be honored. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This is one of pastor's favorite songs. In everything he has done, he has pointed us to the feet of Jesus. And for that, we're grateful.
sing it with us. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every strong. Can we just fill this room with the name of Jesus? Come on, in your way, just begin to speak his name. Begin to thank him for every victory, for every mountain. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, he's my peace. He's my hope. He's my joy. He's my comfort. Jesus.
have spent a lot of time honoring the wonderful man. The pastor, it'll be 11 years in June. And if there's anything that I know about you, you don't want the attention on you right now. Even in this moment, you want the focus to be on Jesus. What I've been able to see out of you, out of your family, has inspired and will continue to inspire. I'm totally related to what your brother Phil said when he said that he saw Jesus, not Doug. I've had the privilege, this church has had the privilege of seeing that for years. So I would like for you to take a look at this screen and I wanna honor God in this moment and reflect on what God has been able to do through such a wonderful, willing vessel like Doug Anderson. But God is loving and God is kind and God works even in spite of the results of sin which cause disease and accidents and pain and suffering. And God can work because this is what God knows. In the end, you win. That's what God knows because God has this amazing eternal perspective. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall. But you have never failed. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won, for you have never failed me there. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word will.
that's just a flaw that this has been you. church love you so much quote this scripture with me would you please love one another as i have loved you by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another even so come lord jesus god bless you Gina, words fail to tell you how much I love you. For those of you who put this together, thank you. I am so honored and so blessed. So thank you. Pastor Dill, we honor you. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you. Church, it has been a joy and a privilege to serve you. And I love you so much, and I thank you with all of my heart. I can't say enough. I've asked God to help me to hold it together. And he's doing it, so I'm thankful for that. Not so much for Gina. <laughs> but she's the crier of us. Thank you for all of you who are here as a special guest, we love you and we thank you. We're honored that you are here. Thank you for your continued prayer. We are holding on for a miracle. And I'm still believing it. Thank you so much for your love. Thanks to my family for being here. Some of the family are here, so thank you for being here. At this time, I would like for the entire staff to join me on the stage and their wives, if the staff would please. This is a beautiful staff and we are so blessed at Rose Heights to have this amazing staff. Would you just give them a hand of appreciation? It has been an honor. It has been an honor to serve with you in the King's work. To God be the glory for all that he has accomplished 
not through me, but through us together as a staff. And I honor you and I love you so very much. Thank you for being an amazing staff. I see your head back there, Brandon. So thank you all. I would like for the leadership team and their wives to please join me on the stage as well. Would you just give the leadership team a hand of appreciation for all that you have done. I say to you, leadership team, thank you for believing in me and all of the crazy ideas. Thank you for your amazing wisdom. It has been a journey for all of us. And together, the Lord has used you to mold and to help us and all that's been accomplished here at Rose Heights. And so I honor you and I thank you, leadership team, for all that you mean to me personally. You have helped me, you have stood by me, you have supported me and Gina, and we thank you so much with all of our heart. We love you dearly. Now I'd like for Pastor Allen and, and Julie to come and stand and right here, please. And Pastor Allen, when the diagnosis happened, it was thrust upon you to lead this church for five months you have led this church well and we thank you and we honor you and on behalf of the leadership team and myself we unanimously uh, recommend you to this congregation to be the next lead pastor seen God walk before us a few just a couple of years ago I told the leadership team and the staff that we needed a succession plan because there would come a time when I was too old to speak <laughs> and so we needed a succession plan and um, some strategies were put into place and some some structure was put into place and and so we strategically planned for a succession not knowing that it would be this soon. But God was before us, and God has walked before this church, and God has a man, and I have prayed sincerely, this leadership team has played, prayed sincerely, and we believe it is God's will to recommend to this church that you lead us into the next level, into the next season of this great church. This is a wonderful church. And next Sunday, church, you will have the opportunity to express your vote, whether to accept Pastor Allen as your next lead pastor. The state administrative bishop will be here. He will take a vote at both campuses, and you will vote accept. You will vote yes or no to Pastor Allen as the next lead pastor. But I'm telling you, I believe, and this leadership team believes it is God's will for this church that this man lead us into the next season. We love you and we thank you. And I will have an opportunity to pray a prayer over you. And I believe God is in control of the church. I believe the Lord is in control. The church is his heart. And he, is in, he has gone before us. And I encourage you with all of my heart to, to accept this man as your next lead pastor. Let's just pray that God's will be done. Shall we join together and pray that God's will be done in this matter? Precious Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for going before us. I thank you, Lord, for the structure that has been put into place I thank you, Lord, for going before us and knowing all things. Lord, you have raised up a man who has worked with me for eight years, who has served faithfully side by side and has been faithful to serve you. 
God, I know that he loves the word of God. I know that he loves your word and he's a student of your word. I know that he is a man of prayer and fasting. I know, God, that he has been called to this church and I know that he serves you humbly. And I pray, God, that you would touch him and I pray that you would continue to anoint this leadership team and I pray that you would continue to anoint this staff to lead us into the next season. I give you praise and honor and glory that's due your name. I feel the strength of the Holy Spirit here this morning. And I thank you, God, for your amazing power. And I thank you, Lord, for going before us. This church is in your hands. And we give you praise, Lord. And we thank you for the next season. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit that walks before us. And we give you praise. Lord, I pray your blessings over both campuses. I pray your blessings over this church. And I pray, Lord, that you would give us supernatural wisdom as we vote for the next lead pastor next week. And we give you thanks and honor and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. So it is a great honor and a privilege to lead you into this scripture one last time. Would you quote this scripture with me, please? Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another, even so come Lord Jesus. God bless you.